Gas Metal Arc Welding, GMAW, Part 2. Shielding gas. Why do we care so much about shielding gas other than it says in the name of this process, gas metal arc welding? Just from the name, you'd assume that the gas part is pretty important. Gas and metal arc welding. So, um, Shielding gas affects the following. Um, it protects the weld from atmospheric contamination. This can't be, this can't be understated how important this is. You run out of gas while you're using the gas metal arc welding process, you are going to have a mess. You are going to have a weld you're going to have to grind out and it's going to have all kinds of porosity and defects in it. Huge. Stabilizes the welding arc. This is also big. If you're using the right kind of gas it can uh, give you a much more stable arc and if you have welders that know what they're doing it'll severely limit the amount of uh, uh, spatter you got to clean up. It defines the metal transfer mode along with the welding parameters. This cannot be understated. Um, it controls weld geometry. Weld geometry is huge, especially when you're doing thin material, maybe even thick material. Um, it controls your amount of penetration and your weld bead profile. Um, it controls the weld composition and properties. If you use carbon dioxide on a weld and then you use the same filler metal with argon, you're going to get different composition and properties. The arc characteristics, um, this gets back to stabilizing the arc and giving you an arc that is um, what you want. Um, speed of welding, it's depending on which gas you use, it's going to help, help or hinder your ability to lay down weld metal. Undercutting tendency, this plays into which shielding gas you use. Cleaning action, some, some shielding gases are going to have a cleansing effect on the weld puddle. Some aren't. They're different. And there's different gases you can dump into, the, into certain proprietary mixtures where they'll have, you know, 2% oxygen or whatever, hydrogen. or There's a number of different varieties on, um, you know, trace elements of gases that they can add to a welding shielding gas to give you different um, cleaning actions. And it gets back to mechanical properties. Um, you know, your mechanical properties are going to be affected by what shielding gas you use. So this shielding gas thing also sets the table for the transfer modes. So we're going to have about five or six slides following this one that are on transfer modes but it all kind of gets back to the shielding gas in that you can't get spray arc from carbon dioxide. But carbon dioxide is good and it has its, uh, its place in arc welding depending on what you're doing for gas metal arc welding. So, But just be cognizant that shielding gas plays a huge part in gas metal arc welding. I originally wasn't going to go down the shielding gas rabbit hole, but um, kind of having trouble talking about the gas metal arc welding process without at least having half a dozen slides on shielding gases. So we're going to go down that rabbit hole into that wormhole and hopefully we come out the other side in a happy place. Hopefully I can rein this in without getting too crazy with it. So um, yeah, go on a 43 slide rant about shielding gases. That's not where I'm going. So just hold tight with me. Um, here's the typical shielding gases used for uh, gas metal arc welding. You've got argon, carbon dioxide, helium, and then you've got various mixtures. Argon oxygen mixtures, argon carbon dioxide oxygen mixtures, argon helium mixtures. There's a whole science behind this as I've said. And if you really get sucked into this or you have to deal with shielding gases, it's best to talk to a professional. The people that supply the gases have all kinds of literature on why specific gas mixtures are good for a specific metal or a certain range of metals in certain positions. This is a whole art form unto itself. So, you know, if you need more information, it's definitely out there. A couple of Google searches and you should get more information than you need on shielding gases and what goes with what. Argon. Argon's kind of the backbone of the welding world as far as gases go. 
Um, argon, it's an element, is used on non-ferrous base metals such as aluminum, nickel, copper, magnesium alloys, and reactive metals such as zirconium and titanium. Argon provides an excellent arc welding stability, penetration, and bead profile on these base metals. When welding ferrous base metals, argon is usually mixed with other gases such as oxygen, helium, carbon dioxide, or hydrogen. Low ionization potential of argon helps create an excellent current path and superior arc stability. Argon produces a constricted arc column with high current density, which causes the arc energy to be concentrated over a small surface area. Carbon dioxide is a reactive gas. It disassociates into carbon monoxide and free oxygen in the heat of the arc. Oxygen then combines with elements transferring across the arc to form oxides from the weld pool in the form of slag and scale, generating a great deal of smoke and fumes. Although CO2 is an active gas and produces an oxidizing effect, sound welds can be consistently achieved with pure carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is often used in its pure form with welding of carbon steel because it is cheap and readily available and produces good welds. Carbon dioxide will not support spray transfer. Not support straight spray transfer. You can't get there from here. There is no road leading to spray transfer with carbon dioxide. Metal transfer is restricted to the short circuiting and globular mode. A major disadvantage of carbon dioxide is harsh globular transfer with its characteristic spatter. So on the spatter part, you really got to dial in and get your parameters and have a guy that knows how to set a machine if you're going to use carbon dioxide. Otherwise, otherwise you're going to have a bunch of spatter. So, but it's all a learning curve. It can be done. I've seen guys weld with carbon dioxide that would leave almost no spatter, but they just knew how to tune in the machine. So it's uh, something that can be overcome. Helium. Our good friend helium, not just used in balloons at kids' parties. Helium is a chemically inert gas that is used for welding applications requiring higher heat inputs. It may improve wetting action, depth of fusion, and travel speeds. It does not produce the stable arc provided by argon. Helium has a higher thermal conductivity than argon and produces a wider arc column. Okay, now we're going to kind of touch base on some some mixtures like argon oxygen mixtures. The addition of small amounts of oxygen to argon stabilizes the welding arc, increases the filler metal droplet rate, lowers the spray transition current, and influences bead shape. The weld pool is more fluid and stays molten longer, allowing the metal to flow out towards the weld toes. So here you can see there's three different options. You've got a 1% argon blend, you know, stainless steels, the oxygen stabilizes the arc. Um, you've got the second option which is a uh, 2% oxygen used for spray carbon steels, low alloy steels, and stainless. Um, provides greater wetting action which allows the weld to blend in a little better on the toes. Weld mechanical properties and corrosion resistance of the welds are similar. Um, then you get to 5% oxygen it's more fluid but controllable weld pool. It is the most commonly used argon oxygen mixture for carbon steels. Higher travel speeds. So, um, argon oxygen mixture is definitely an option. Big for carbon steel. Argon carbon dioxide mixtures. If you're in fabrication of carbon steels, you're probably going to run across an argon carbon dioxide mixture. Um, argon carbon dioxide blends are used on carbon and low alloy steels and have limited applications on stainless steels. Yeah, the, the carbon dioxide doesn't work too good with stainless steels. Carbon dioxide added to argon at higher current levels increases spatter. Gets back to you can't get the, I told you you can't get to spray arc with carbon dioxide. Well, you can get there, but it's got to be below 80, per, it's got to be below 20% carbon dioxide, 80% argon. In GNAW, um, higher current level must be reached when using argon carbon dioxide in order to establish and maintain a transferable spray. Um, above 20% carbon dioxide, the spray transfer becomes unstable and periodic 
short circuiting and globular transfer occurs. It's back to you can't get there from here. Um, but here's a couple of useful blends that you'll see. 5% um, uh, CO2, 95% argon. This is used for spray transfer and short circuiting transfer on you know a lot of carbon steels. 5% uh, mixture may be used for uh, gas metal arc welding pulse of low, low alloy steels for out of position welding. Um, 75 25 if you're doing any amount of welding and you're using um, hard wire and and using some flux cores um, which is another presentation but we'll touch base on this um, this blend is commonly used for gas metal arc with short circuiting transfer on low carbon steels it was formulated to provide optimum droplet frequency on short circuiting transfer using 035 and 045 wire diameter it provides good arc stability, weld pool control, and weld bead appearance. This blend will not support spray type mode of metal transfer. So, but 7525 is a good blend. You can use it, I've seen it used on various flux cores, or you can use it on um, for short circuiting transfer on carbon steels, and you can get some really beautiful welds out of it. You don't get a lot of spatter and it's it's just a good gas blend for that application. Argon carbon dioxide oxygen mixtures um, generally used for spray arc welding providing high deposition rates and often higher rates of travel speed than carbon dioxide. Um, the mixtures contain these three gases are versatile they can operate in short circuiting globular spray pulsed high density transfer modes. There's a bunch of different compositions available um, and this is good for carbon steel and low alloy th steels of a bunch of different thicknesses. So these tri mixes are, you know, mixes with three gases. You can look into them. And they offer you a lot of advantages. So just something to keep in mind. Helium is often mixed with argon to obtain the advantages of both gases. Argon provides good arc stability and cleaning action while helium promotes wetting with broad width of fusion. Argon helium blends are used primarily for non-ferrous base metals such as aluminum, copper, nickel alloys, um, magnesium alloys, and reactive metals. Helium additions to an argon base gas will increase the heat input. Generally, the thicker the base metal, the higher the percentage of helium. Small percentages of helium as low as 20% will affect the arc. As helium percentages increase, the arc voltage spatter and weld width to depth ratio will increase. Um, while porosity is minimized in aluminum, the argon percentage must be at least 20% when mixed with helium to produce and maintain a stable spray transfer. So like like it says here, you're gonna you're gonna use this. You're not gonna use a argon helium mixture generally for carbon steel. You're gonna use it on you know, stainless steels, aluminums, coppers, nickel alloys, things like that. So, um, yeah, it's it's useful, but it, it, you're not going to run into it generally unless you're welding on those types of alloys. Okay, in this slide, we're going to take a look at the effects of bead po profile and penetration on fillet welds. Um, you can see how much, if you look in the far right, where we're using carbon dioxide on that fillet weld, Look at how deep the penetration is into the root of the weld. And notice how that it's not wetted very, very well into the base material. Um, if you slide over one to the argon CO2, you can see where the weld bead is a, it, there's quite a bit of penetration there, but it's not nearly as much as the carbon dioxide, just the pure carbon dioxide. But you will notice how the the weld metal is on that bead is wetted in. It transitions into the base metal a little better than the carbon dioxide alone. And then by the time we get over here to our third example on the left with just argon and oxygen, you don't have near the amount of penetration that you did in the first two um, welds, but the argon O2, you can see it's, it's wetted in much better. Um, it transitions from weld into base metal a lot better than it does in just the CO2. So 
these are factors that you can take into um, consideration when choosing shielding gases so just something to keep in mind in the previous slides we had mentioned spatter and the amount of spatter um, this slide shows you the effects of bead profile and the amount of spatter and penetration on welds just from the different gases so you can see like for argon there's a very distinctive weld bead profile argon helium helium and then co2 you can see where co2 has better penetration but a lot more spatter helium is a flatter weld you don't get near the penetration and but you do get a lot of spatter uh, then we'll go to argon helium it's kind of a mix between argon and helium and then you get over to heat argon on the end and you've got pretty reasonable penetration but you don't have near the amount of spatter so this is another uh, another thing to be cognizant of when choosing shielding gases or when you hear people talking about shielding gases um, very important spatter bead profile and the amount of penetration are very important variables that you need to be cognizant of shielding gas why do we care so much about shielding gas other than it says in the name of this process gas metal arc welding just from the name you'd assume that the gas part is pretty important gas and metal arc welding so um, shielding gas affects the following um, it protects the weld from atmospheric contamination this can't be this can't be understated how important this is you run out of gas while you're using the gas metal arc welding process you are going to have a mess you're going to have a weld you're going to have to grind out and it's going to have all kinds of porosity and defects in it huge stabilizes the welding arc this is also big if you're using the right kind of gas it can uh, give you a much more stable arc and if you have welders that know what they're doing it'll severely limit the amount of uh, uh, spatter you got to clean up it defines the metal transfer mode along with the welding parameters this cannot be understated um, it controls weld geometry weld geometry is huge especially when you're doing thin material maybe even thick material um, it controls your amount of penetration and your weld bead profile um, it controls the weld composition and properties if you use carbon dioxide on a weld and then you use the same filler metal with argon you're going to get different composition and properties the arc characteristics um, this gets back to stabilizing the arc and giving you an arc that is um, what you want um, speed of welding it's depending on which gas you use it's going to help help or hinder your ability to lay down weld metal undercutting tendency this plays into which shielding gas you use cleaning action some some shielding gases are going to have a cleansing effect on the weld puddle some aren't they're different and there's different gases you can dump into the into certain proprietary mixtures where they'll have you know two percent oxygen or whatever hydrogen or there's a number of different varieties on um, you know trace elements of gases that they can add to a welding shielding gas to give you different um, cleaning actions and it gets back to mechanical properties um, you know your mechanical properties are going to be affected by what shielding gas you use so this shielding gas thing also sets the table for the transfer modes so we're going to have about five or six slides following this one that are on transfer modes but it all kind of gets back to the shielding gas in that you can't get spray arc from carbon dioxide but carbon dioxide is good and it has its uh, its place in arc welding depending on what you're doing for gas metal arc welding so but just be cognizant that shielding gas plays a huge part in gas metal arc welding 